Hi there, Nodar Performance fans. Tonight I'm going to make a really long-winded, boring video, for some people I guess, on how and why I converted my 1985 Saab 900 Turbo to run on an Easy K ignition system, as found in a bunch of other vehicles in the 80s that run on the LH 2.2 and the Bosch LH 2.4 injection system. I'm going to do this all in one take, so bear with me. I'm going to go over kind of why I did it, what you need to do it if you're interested in doing it, and uh, just a couple hints maybe for installing it. The Easy K ignition system, of course, um, is the, the, the wiring harness between LH 2.2 and LH 4 is identical from what I can find in my research on wiring diagrams. So basically, if you use any Easy K system from an LH 2.2 car, and if you have the saw, of course, it's got the aluminum air mass meter. That's LH 2.2. If you take one from an LH 2.4 car, which is, I guess, 89 and up, you plug it into there, it should work as well. So it's the wiring diagrams, the pinouts are pretty much the same between computers. Uh, when I was testing stuff, I used this one from an 88 Volvo 740 Turbo in mine, and it did work. So there's just a little bit of proof that they basically didn't change any uh, pinouts. Um, the Saab ignition system is actually pretty archaic for its time, considering, you know, how technical the car was. They basically had the distributor fixed at 16 degrees. They had a diaphragm on there that the turbo pushed the timing back to 10 or 11 degrees on boost. Um, during cruising and low throttle settings, the timing got pulled up to about 22, I'm assuming, probably. I've never tested it. So you're losing a lot of low-end torque. You're losing a lot of efficiency, um, in low low throttle settings and you're also losing the benefit of advancing timing at higher rpm to get a lot more power um in my car of course it was a budget build so i needed to find a good way to do it and i knew that saab and volvo for that matter used an easy k ignition system which is a digital system with maps and all that other stuff and it uses a knock sensor which is even more beneficial to those turbocharging um, and it also uses NOx, so it uses the NOx sensor in conjunction with the programmed maps to determine timing. The Easy K system um, actually has the ability to, to retard timing individually on cylinders. So it listens for knock on each fire and it determines which cylinder is knocking and is able to adjust each cylinder's timing individually um, based on knock. Um, so if you have the map set to a certain value and one cylinder tends to run hotter, that cylinder will be retarded, but not the other. So you will still have, you know, optimal performance. Um, it's also good when you're running on crappy fuel, if you happen to put some in. Um, it's a little extra protection, especially if you're pushing your car harder like I am. Um, so I, you know, basically just using this system and I've been using it for about five years now. Um, completely success successfully. I haven't had any issues with it at all. Um, a lot of people have actually asked me how I did it. So what I'm going to do is quick run through what you need to do it. You'll need an ECU from a non-turbo car. Uh, the, the reason being is that the EZK needs a load signal to determine where in its maps its ignition timing should be. The turbo ECUs have this pin, but the pin isn't wired to anything inside. It's just empty traces. So if you were really ambitious, you could solder that tra uh, transistor and two resistors to get it working. But you're better off just going to get a non-turbo ECU, taking the 24-pin chip out of your turbo ECU, and then putting it into your non-turbo ECU and putting it all back together. End of story. And it'll just work identically. You won't notice any difference. You'll need an Easy K system from... But you'll basically need a chippable easy K system if you want to be able to chip it. If you if you don't, I would recommend strongly if you're especially if your car is turbo to get the turbo easy K, as it will have retard in the maps instead of advance. So obviously, as the load increases on a turbocharged vehicle, ignition timing needs to decrease. Uh, if you get a non-turbo easy K box, that won't happen, and you will have the nastiest detonation you've ever heard. On my car. I mounted it where a lot of people's stock APC system is. Mine's an 85, so my APC is actually in the back seat. So I had that space open, so I just put it there. If you have an 86 or above 900, you'll have the APC mounted to this bracket. So I would just double it up, use a longer screw, and put it on the back side because there's room in the fender for it to sit. 
so it'll sit right about there so it should work fine not only that there's a lot of wiring nearby that you need to use to get it to work in this area so it's a really good spot actually to put it you can see this is my EZK harness which I've made and taped it all up into the factory harness you don't have to do it uh, it doesn't matter to me but I like to have my wiring super duper clean so I did I wired everything up integrated into the harness so you don't even know what's there because I know it's going to be there to stay forever you will need optionally of course a distributor without the diaphragm on it um, my, that this distributor here is a 009 came from I think an 86 non turbo didn't didn't happen to have the advanced diaphragm so pretty happy that it gets to be a nice clean install cleans up the engine bay of more crap which is nice or you can take your factory turbo distributor and just remove the vacuum line, cap it off, and leave it be. It's not going to affect it at all. The next thing you'll need is to change your um, power stage for your coil. Power stage fitted to most of the turbos will be the Bosch 139 module. Um, it's a dual smart power stage, basically meaning that this unit controls the coil's dwell time. The EZK is a digital system with all the maps for coil dwell. So it's actually doing all the control for the coil dwell. So if you try to wire this up to the EZK, it actually doesn't work completely because actually the pinout's not even close to the same. So I would just get the module that the EZK system came out of, which is almost always a 124 module, which doesn't have dwell in it. If you get, if you're lucky enough to get an EZK that's chippable, it's great because it allows you to basically free flash the maps however you choose and it also allows you if you want to emulate using an ostrich or such emulator in it so you can basically tune in real time with your laptop which is just amazing for something so archaic and old that's the primary reason why I did this is because I figured out the maps inside I can emulate it and tune it with my laptop which I find just fantastic I don't need anything else other than that in addition to all that stuff, I would strongly recommend you pull the wiring harness for the EZK out of the car that it came from. The reason being is that the wires to the Hall effect sensor and the knock sensor as well as between the EZK and the power stage are a special wire with a drain shield on it. So you'll see on the wiring there's this drain or ground so it kills all the... Um, basically electrical noise through the wire so you get a better signal um, I pull the harness just so you don't have to deal with that wire trying to solder it and get the pins back on it and stuff like that would be a massive pain um, so if you have all the wiring you'll still need to be a little bit savvy um, and you'll need to rearrange some of the pins on the Bosch connectors which are actually quite easy to get the pins out of these is actually quite easy you basically just take a screwdriver you shove it down the face of it and just pull it out. So you can see on these, there's a little tab that basically gets pushed in. And when you shove the screwdriver in there, it pushes the little tab in so you can pull it out before putting it back in. Of course, you bend the tab back and then you shove it back in the connector. And the reason you're probably going to have to do that is because of that power stage pinout difference. Of course, the 124 module is the non dwell smart module and you which will which you will have to use so you can see the pinout is slightly different so if you take the whole wiring harness out of the EZK car you probably won't have to do it or if you want to use your factory wiring and just rearrange stuff a little bit you can also do it that way because I found that the Sawbland Hundreds harness basically from this connector, this is at this end of the engine bay where the engine harness gets its power feeds and stuff like that from the fuse box. Basically everything from this connector and back to the engine is the same on all turbo and non-turbo engines. So because the EZK system has to talk to the fuel injection system to get its load signal as well as its throttle position signal, you need to wire in basically pins from this EZK unit to the fuel injection system. 
So because I found that the harnesses are the same, you'll actually find those wires sitting there waiting for you, pin number 24 and pin number 3, sitting right there in that gray connector going towards the fuel injection computer. So basically, that's a real sh you don't have to run wires through the interior or over the firewall or anything like that because they're already there for you, so it's great. So a good way to do it, of course, is to pull the f pop the fuse box out of there, untape the loom real quick, get a couple wires in there, and just shove it into the gray connector so it's real nice to use. Now, the only other thing that is different between the turbo and non-turbo is the way that the engine ECU gets its RPM signal. On the turbo ECU, the ECU, or on the turbo car, sorry, the ECU gets its RPM directly from the coil. That's like a high voltage signal. The non-turbo system, or the EZK system, doesn't use this high voltage signal to get its RPM. The EZK actually feeds the computer with the RPM information. So you can see on this diagram that I made a couple years ago, and it's it's just really for me, I made this diagram and it helped a lot. You can see from the distributor, you get the three wires from the Hall effect going to the computer on pins 10, 24, and 4. The output of the EZK, which fires the coil, goes out pin number 16 to the igniter on pin 5, which of course fires the coil. On pin number 8 of the EZK, you have this load signal, and that comes from pin number 24 of your LH2.2 unit. That pin, of course, is in that engine harness, as I showed you. Pin number 3 of the Bosch 2.2 Bosch computer goes to the throttle position sensor. The EZK needs to have that pin as well wired, which is it's basically that's its idle switch. So the computer knows when the engine is idling and sets the timing at more of a fixed value instead of on the map. Pin number 17 of the EZK is what feeds the LH2.2 with the RPM information. It's engine speed signal T03, it's called. And if you're looking at factory diagrams, it's always referred to as that. So you need to basically cut the wire from the coil to the ECU and wire in pin number 17 to that instead to feed the ECU with the information. Not a heck of a lot of wires to hook up. But it may take a bit if you want to make it nice and clean. I know it did take me a long time because I wanted it to be real nice. I have a pinout diagram of the EZK 117K, which is the same between most all Saab and Volvo, which I use to wire my system up. I'll show I'll go over here to the Bosch 139 module. This is the turbo power stage, and this is the non turbo EZK. So, quick wiring diagram to help any of those who care to do it. I know that on my car it made a huge difference in response. <clears throat> I ended up getting another 50 miles for a tank of gas with nothing else changed but the ignition system. Of course, I remapped my EZK completely um, to suit my needs for uh, higher octane fuel. Um, I always run the car on premium, so I have far more aggressive timing curve than what most people would bother with. Um, and I also gained a lot of horsepower as well. Um, the top end seems a lot, lot happier. Definitely don't get that flat lining up at the high RPM anymore. Um, pretty much that's about it. Can't really think of anything else that you need. Oh, yeah, one other thing. Turbo cars with the APC, of course, have the knock sensor mounted into the engine block right down in there you of course will the EZK will also need an aux sensor so what I did of course is just did the typical method of stacking them together you basically take the APC knock sensor and the EZK knock sensor stack them on top of each other and use just a longer M8 by 1.25 fastener to hold the block torque it to 15 foot pounds as the manual states if you don't do that the EZK will go into a limp hold mode and you'll get really crappy timing um, also not giving the EZK the load signal from the, from the fuel injection system will also put it into limp hope and you'll also get really crappy performance things I've learned, um, from having the system. Um, so yeah, um, any other questions? Just 
shoot me a message or whatever, and I'll uh, attempt to answer it. Um, jog my memory. I know I did do this conversion about four years ago, um, and haven't had a problem with it since. So, I'll try to jog my memory if anybody cares. The LH 2.2 pinouts, of course, are available all over the place, and also there are wiring diagrams and wiring manuals out for the Saab 900. Of course, this will work on a 9000 as well. So if you have the 9000 2 liter from 86 to, I don't know, 8990, that would also be a good benefit of performance for that engine as well. Um, since the, basically the fuel and basically everything's identical in between the two cars, just its engine configuration is different. So you'll get the same benefit in the 9000 as, as I did in the 900. So yeah, that's about it. Can't think of anything else that I did in order to convert it. Coil, of course, is the same. No change there. No change in the wiring. I, of course, redirected the Hall Effect sensor. It used to be, of course, directly wired to power stage. That you remove. Of course, it goes to the Easy K. Then the Easy K is what fires the coil now instead of the Hall Effect sensor. So that when you're looking at the Easy K diagrams, which are available all over the internet, that's the one difference you know, hopefully you catch it that, of course, the whole effect sensor isn't firing the coil anymore. The Easy K is actually firing the coil. So, other than that, that's about all there is to it. I'm very happy with the system. I'm very happy with its performance. It's very reliable. It's never given me any issues. Um, more, definitely more response low end. Definitely more fuel economy. Definitely more power for sure. And it works well with the APC system. I find that. The uh, APC system is a lot less active uh, because the EZK I feel is a little bit more sensitive to knock. So during light knocking, the EZK is taking care of the timing, um, backing it off a little. And then during heavier knocking, the APC comes in and reduces boost as well. 